The Cube at Hadoop Summit 2014 is brought to you by anchor sponsor Hortonworks. We do Hadoop. And headline sponsor, WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Welcome back to Hadoop Summit on theCUBE. I'm Jeff Kelly with Wikibon. My next guest is Bill Yetman, VP of Commerce, Data, and Analytics at Ancestry.com. Uh, Bill, welcome to theCUBE. Hi, no, nice to be here. Well, thanks for coming on. Uh, we were talking earlier, uh, before we went on the air, uh, about your title. You've got, some, you've got three very important words in there, not, not least of which VP, but Commerce, Data, and Analytics. I think most of our viewers will be familiar with Ancestry.com, but tell us a little bit about what, what your role there is. Um, for um, my teams and my part of the organization, on the commerce side, um, I own the services and things that bring in all the financial money and uh, keep track of the subscriptions and everything there. Data um, involves the data warehouse and our big data efforts. Um, we're mushing those together and mm -hmm. driving them together. Um, also under data, we have the DNA project. Um, I have the teams that do the ethnicity matching, the ethnicity and the DNA matching that we put on, on, on the site. Um, we show genetic cousins, so if we're related and we uh, find out that we're you know, fourth cousins, it means there's a common ancestor 150 to 300 years ago, you know, and mm -hmm. there's a high probability and the high 90 percent that uh, we are related somewhere back there. Wow. Um, and then for analytics, um, because I have the data warehouse and the data, I'm trying to feed the analytics to get actionable insights for the business. Well, I mean, there's so many cool use cases we could talk about. Um, why don't we start a little bit, kind of digging into. The, I mean, the role of data plays at your organization. I mean, it's, wow. I would imagine it's pretty critical. I mean, it's core to your business. It's critical. Um, if you've uh, never been on the site or you, you're not sure how the site works, um, you come to the site, um, start by building a family tree. And once you can get back to your grandparents mm -hmm. and we can connect you into um, the records, uh, we can start showing the shaky leaves, you mm -hmm. know, and the little hints that say um, what we know about this person from, say, the 1940 census, the 1930 census, we have birth, marriage, death records, but also user-contributed content. Other people have put up their family trees, mm -hmm. um, and we can find matches that are related mm -hmm. and uh, show those to you as well. So you may find a photo of a great grandfather or somebody that somebody else has put up mm -hmm. that you've never seen before. And so it's a great way to do crowdsourcing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just really different. So I mean, really you've got a, data has to be a core competency at your organization. Yeah, it does. So talk a little bit about how you go about doing that internally. Um, how you, because there's a lot of interest I think from, from, I guess maybe organizations that might not be quite as data centric, but a lot of interest from them about how do you build up a competency in analytics and big data. What's the approach? I mean, it's, it, it, it might be a hard question to answer actually for, for Ancestry.com because it's so core, it's, it's I, I would imagine permeates all corners of your organization, but to the extent that you can, I mean, what are, how do you go about kind of cultivating that talent internally in the culture of data? Um, one is we're, we're hiring people and we're keeping the talent internal. We're not outsourcing it to other areas. Mm -hmm. We keep it um, within the organization. We're trying to grow it and grow that expertise and get better at it. Um, that's one, one key thing. Um, and then just the amount of data, um, at times it can be overwhelming. And mm -hmm. so how do you find those nuggets that you want to start with and, and what are those, those insights that you can, you know, you can make um, move? So if you sign up for a 14 day free trial, um, we found that um, if you do what we call 25 discoveries in the first 10 days, then you're likely to be more successful and stay with the service, mm -hmm. right? So um, how can we get you to find more discoveries, right? And how can we lead you down that path? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're struggling and you're, only, you're stuck at you know, 15, how do we get those last 10 to mm -hmm. you and help, mm -hmm. you, um, help you discover your past? So those are the kind of things that we're trying to do to help people. Um, and, and if I can help the customers, if I take a focus on you know, doing something that works well for the customers, 
the retention and the conversion and the revenue sort of takes care of itself. You put the customers first, for yeah, sure. Yeah, put the customers first. Um, let's, let's talk about the types of data you're dealing with, because uh, you know, I've, I've actually you know, been uh, poked around Ancestry.com, you've got census data, you've got images you mentioned, um, you know, all sorts of data. Uh, very, this is not your structured data world coming out of a CRM application or a, you know, a financial application. You've got all sorts of data. Give us some examples of the kind of data sources that you've got to wrangle with. Um, well, uh, you know, the National Archives. We're one of the few companies that can actually work closely with the National Archives and get some of the data, um, uh, the documents and things from the National Archives and get them scanned in, get them indexed, and get them on the site. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, uh, if you look at just the record data, mm -hmm. um, it's just fascinating to try. Uh, have you ever looked at a census document? Uh, I've seen scans, I haven't really looked it's, too closely. It's really interesting because every census writer had different handwriting, <laughs> and everybody, and some of them, their handwriting mm -hmm. was really, really bad. I, you know, <laughs> I so bet. you can see that there are problems with the transcriptions, and how do you correct it and mm -hmm. get it right? And um, we found that one of the ways you do it is you allow the customers who know and say, that is you know, my great grandfather, but that's not, his name is not you know, you know, Wilbur, it's mm. William, right? Yep. And allow them to go in and change it. Oh, okay. you know, so, um, and you keep the original, but you show the alternatives mm -hmm. and allow mm -hmm. people to search by the alternatives and have those show up. So there's a lot of little things like that. Um, and um, if you just think about all that census data, how can you stitch it together? Mm -hmm. And how do you make it, you know, because some people were in the 1910, 1930, and 1940 census. How can you tie them all together and mm -hmm. follow those families? Mm -hmm. um, we've done some very interesting data visualization with some of this. Um, some uh, The data science team looked at um, immigration patterns from about 1700 to about uh, 1950. And, watched uh, uh, the lines go from different parts of Europe and mm -hmm. different parts of Asia mm -hmm. back into the US. Um, and you watch it over a time, time of period. It's, it's a great visualization. Um, another thing that's interesting to look at is just trees and mm -hmm. tree data. Um, we have some people that have some really huge trees, um, hundreds of thousands of nodes, an individual person that they mm. put up in their tree. I don't know how they had the time <laughs> to go find all those you know, people, but they have them. Yeah. You know, and you look at, you can look at them visually and sometimes they're just a rat's nest mm -hmm. and other times they're laid out very Great. nice and neat. Uh -huh. And so just some of those quick visualizations can be, um, can be uh, really cool. Very nice. So tell us a little bit about the technologies you're using to, to handle all this data, because you mentioned you're kind of bringing your data warehouse and some of your big data initiatives kind of together. And okay. there's a lot of talk at this conference about, you know, is big data, is Hadoop going to replace the data warehouse? Is it complementary? What's the impact going to be on the data warehouse, vendor community? What's your approach? Um, we've had a traditional data warehouse for um, years, and so we would be um, side by side. Um, and, but we are moving to uh, an MPP solution. We use mm -hmm. what used to be Paracel, now Matrix from Axiom, you know, Axiom um, as for the data warehouse. Um, Hadoop is starting to do a lot of our ETL. Almost all of our data is going into Hadoop and we're starting to ETL. Mm -hmm. And how do we aggregate it into Matrix? On top of that, mm -hmm. we use Tableau mm -hmm. um, to expose it and trying to I'm really trying to get the organization to self-serve. And how can, mm. how can we very quickly get you know, new data, new insights, new behaviors from the customers into the data warehouse and expose back mm -hmm. out um, to the organization, to both product and marketing, to um, build a better product, build mm -hmm. a better experience. Mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I wish we had more time. We're, we're about to wrap up. Uh, so I just want to kind of give you the last word. Uh, what are your thoughts on this show? I mean, it's, it's, yeah, this is my third show and it's grown significantly over three years and uh, it's, it's, it's you know, 3,200 plus people from 1,000 companies. What's uh, your take on kind of the vibe here? I think one of the things that I really like coming to this show and seeing is what people are doing with Hadoop. Mm -hmm. And um, I really like seeing the companies that get up and stand up and say, this is what we did right, this is where we had issues, this is where we um, changed and, um, and grew. 
Um, and that's really what I like about this show, and I'm surprised at how big it is this year. I missed last year, so I, I was in um, uh, you know, two 2012, mm -hmm. and so I think it was a little over 2,200 then, mm -hmm. and it's 3,500 today. I'm surprised at the growth. And, so, and just the people that you walk around and talk to, um, a lot of people with great experience and having done a lot of things, and then people that are just starting out. You see all types. Mm. Um, and the problems they're going after, like us, we're, you know, we're big data um, to get our customer behavior, but also for DNA. Mm -hmm. And so you know, the, you know, Hadoop is so flexible and allows you to solve so many problems. It's, it's amazing. Well, fantastic. Well, Bill Yetman from Ancestry.com, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Okay. I hope it wasn't too painful. <laughs> we appreciate it. We love uh, practitioners telling their stories to our audience or other practitioners. So. Well, I re really appreciate it. It was a ton of fun. Likewise. Thank you. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here live at Hadoop Summit in San Jose.